again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. I'm very scarfied up. And uh, I have uh, this dress on that the Vietnamese tailor on uh, Elm Street yeah. made for me. I think it's, I don't know, but I think it's it good. needs more. Puff. I need it. It needs I, some stabilizer I think, or something Yeah, I there. think the like I, I should put... Um, like, like yeah. actually, what I was thinking is, I was like, what about those uh, bath scrubby things? Yeah. Like two really blue flaws. <laughs> but something, yeah. It's, it, fabrics are funny. I, I work in a um, company that makes custom window treatments, and it is always, you know, fabric is a funny thing. Like, and if you're good at working with fabric, you're real, that's a unique skill. Yes. I mean, I can sew, I can make things, but Angela that I work with knows how to make weird things fall weird yes, ways. Yes, drapery as they say in the fashion yep. industry, which it turns out, by the way, uh, fashion industry, very, very ungreen. And I find it really interesting because uh, no one wants to ever yeah. talk about that. Right. Um, we were, it was Louis's birthday on Sunday, so we went down to Boston for mm -hmm. the uh, Lego yeah. exhibit. If anyone is into Legos or just into art, highly recommend. It's called The Bricks of Boston. Mm -hmm. It's on Newberry Street. And I don't know, it's just some dude who was like really into Lego. And so he started making art. And initially, it's sort of, um, you know, like min uh, Venus de Milo. Yeah, mi mimicking like, other art. Mimi and then he starts to make his own stuff. And there's some really cool stuff. There was this one, uh, and you can go to Carla Garrick. Uh, um, to my Facebook, I posted a lot of photos. There's this one where it's this red dress. Yeah. And it's literally a dress that has movement. It's got like the hem yeah. kicks up. And uh, I overheard the person who was doing the tour, we were just doing our own thing, um, say, oh, Lady Gaga was gonna wear that to some exhibit or to something, but then she tried it on. And I was like, how does that even work? Like, are you naked? And right. then you like you build, build the Lego <laughs> dress? I, I wasn't Is it sure that together? Was right. Uh, but she, in the end, said it was way too uncomfortable. Yeah. But there's this really fantastic photo in front of a old-timey film uh, yeah. marquee. And uh, the woman's got the dress on, and it just looks... And there was one with an umbrella. It was It was just... It is kind of fun. We, um, speaking of really fun things, um, Sunday night, Dan and I drove... Or Sunday afternoon, but Sunday night, we drove to Elliott, Maine, to this Winter Wonders light show, Okay, crazy lights. I mean, you walk for probably, I'd say a good 45 minutes to an hour. Oh, wow. I mean, it, it we, because Is it's, it in a neighborhood? It No, it's a farm. Oh, cool. And from what I understand, somebody this morning um, commented, I posted pictures this morning on my Facebook page, and a friend of ours that lives closer there says they start setting it up in the summer. Oh, wow. I mean, it was, I, I can't even imagine how many lights, because it's just paths and it weaves. So it's in a woods. Oh, on a farm cool. so lots of like birch types very yeah. straight trees and some of them are completely covered in lights all the way out to the tippity so tips. is it kind of like magical like you're in this well thing? that and then there's like <laughs> should i drop some shrooms well and go i do mean it? i was thinking drinking <laughs> if nothing else was more like well i really should have had a cocktail before this um it was it was just really cool like there was a tractor that they covered in lights and you go through a couple tunnels one of the tunnels had multicolored lights that moved at, like oh, so if you walked at right, the right pace it went do, with you but oh, that's cool. um there was like a there were all these trees that um the whole tree was all different you know, like so there was per all different color oh, trees that sounds fun. um they had a whole garden of sunflowers like a whole field of sunflowers that the sunflower itself was had lights on oh, it wow. and um it just was crazy it was like it was $16 well worth the $16 right. um I would go again. I would. It would be tons of fun to go with a whole bunch of people. I think um, because you do kind of they they spark, space it out so that there's not too many people in there at once. Okay. So it's not just a right. mess. Um, but people do. You know, people don't get social. You know, there's like at one point a couple. This older couple up behind us, two or three people, and they're like, I could tell they were getting really close. I didn't care, but. They're talking about, you know, their uncle who's dying, and I'm thinking I'm trying to enjoy the lights. Could you, could you not talk about the de half-dead people? So we did that. So that was fun. Uh, um, cool. got, gave us a reason to go shopping in Kittery. And, oh, fun. Yeah. yeah. Just to finish my thoughts. So in the Boston thing with the fashion industry, um, I actually noticed when we were coming out of the museum, 
there was this uh, building and it had posters on the outside and it's all um, posters actually attacking the the fashion industry huh. and talking about the fact that all this made to order fashion so mm -hmm. the cheap stuff yeah. you get at Target and and you know like those turnaround yeah. fashions how um, how how problematic it is so hmm. I just thought that was kind of interesting my friends uh, that we got back from uh, not Honduras uh, not Costa Guatemala Rica. Costa Rica um, they have a factory that makes clothes so mm -hmm. I'm just like very aware and yep. I was like oh this is kind of interesting this is uh, maybe you know an area where people can start yep. to change their behavior that could have uh, positive impacts uh, well, I would imagine because all the polyester fabrics like yeah. man-made man-made fabrics has got to be, you know, where does it go? Because like we, even in our in our factory, I mean, there's always cutoffs, and they all just go into the trash. Because what do you do with them? Well, I mean, we could probably save them, and they could probably get recycled by some know, company. And, but it, business wise, it's just not cost effective to do that. No, where would and, we store them, you know. And and well, you know, and I mean, some companies like I buy a lot of my just throwaway fashion clothes from H and M, yep. and they actually have a whole line where they do recycled yeah. clothes, so you can actually yeah. you can buy them and you can send them back and stuff. But just, you know, for me, it's not so much about climate change, because what's that, right? But for me, it is about, it's turning out that a lot of the these uh, synthetic things mm. have a really bad impact on our mm. health, mm. right? It affects your endocrine system and all mm. this stuff. So I was like, huh, maybe things I need to like, right, things you, you don't know, necessarily think about. Marie Kondo my cupboard and <laughs> take a look there and see. So that's going to be the project for, um, for this Christmas. Speaking <laughs> of things not necessarily being what you think they are um to, let's see today's tuesday yesterday and monday's your new leader um this uh, this article i think this was on the front page so it caught my eye because i'm always i am actually very curious about what we do for homeless and the you know that whole lump of an issue what we actually well i mean i'm not saying some of it's just homeless and some of it are people <laughs> no I'm, I'm laughing at the lump word because i have heard it you literally like be lump. like talk about the but lumps. you know what i mean this bigger problem <laughs> no of course and like what we're actually doing what the cost of what we're actually doing is if any of the things we're doing is effective or are we just is it just a machine of God? Like, is this a new industry, you know? Well, and, and before you get yeah. into the specifics here, I think that's important to talk about because over the weekend, we were talking to some friends about homelessness and poverty and stuff. And, you know, I say on the show all the time, incentives matter, yeah. right? And what you subsidize economically, you will get more of. And so when we look at the homelessness problem and the poverty problem, we have to also realize that there's this entire industry that's now been built up around it. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, is that industry motivated to reduce the problem? Or, or do they perpetuate. only exist if the problem is perpetuated? Yep. And I do think we do need to look at the, the, the core issues behind some so of this stuff. So even before I get into this article, so I also, over the weekend, and I did, I made a post in a public forum purposely to see what, people had to say. Were you trolling, Tommy? No, I was very upfront. People complain <laughs> about rents. Yes. I get it, right? I, you hear it. You hear, oh my God, rents are ridiculous. Oh my God, oh my God. There's no play, there's not enough units. That that I wholeheartedly believe is to be the case. Blame the biggest problem, right, the biggest problem that we have is we have more people looking to rent or live in a house than we have space. So when people complain that they don't like the apartments being built or that they're higher end, rent apartments the reality is is even those higher rent ones will make the pool of available units bigger which should help alleviate some of the housing problems that we have but i had posted to, i posted one article because again with the rents i'm always curious like what do people think like when you actually do numbers so there was a house in my neighborhood for sale three unit so i was curious like aha here's a good example what is this going to cost so i took the cost of the house and I did looked up what the current mortgage rate was in a 30 year mortgage and I looked up their property taxes and posted the specifics. And oh my God, people just don't get it. So I was I was really taken aback at how many people just can't wrap their head around the math. Like oh and how many people think money goes way farther than it does. 
So Oh, it's those greedy capitalists gouging, gouging well, the little man. They're gouging, they're gouging. There's no reason why a rent rent should be this much. And I said, but if you do the math, you know, here's this and that's why it costs that much. And and one has to remember it's not just, you know, the building. It's it's things like utilities, well, if that's included. Well, that, Energy prices so, just doubled. You've got house insurance. You've got home, well, that, water. Well, was like, in this building if I was giving the benefit of the doubt. You know, like I was trying to be conservative. I wasn't trying to be over the top. Um, basically, as it is right now, the rent and just the, the mortgage and the taxes would be $3,400 a month. And it looks for like the they, building or for per for the unit. building. No, no for the okay. building. And the total rent collected is fifty four hundred dollars. So people were like, that's two thousand dollars a month. What are they why why is the landlord making all that money? And I said, Wait, we're not that's not his money. He's gotta pay the water and sewer bill for three units, which I don't even have any idea how much that is. I'm gonna guess it's a couple hundred dollars a month easily. He's gotta pay homeowners insurance on a three unit building. I'm sure that's you know, that's not twelve dollars, that's money. He has to pay the electric bill on the common area, which the delivery for electric is alone is like forty or fifty dollars a month, plus the usage. And then the, any maintenance that's involved. And then people come back and they're complaining, well, no, landlords don't maintain. And I said, you can't, you just can't say that. That's not the truth across the board. But like, people were like, that's still out. What are they doing with all that money? And I said, well, what do you think happens when the furnace breaks? And how much do you think a furnace costs? And somebody's like, well, $10,000. I'm like, so where do you think the landlord? So this concept that the landlord somehow should just have this money of their own to pay for these things. Like people were complaining that I hadn't factored in any down payment on the mortgage. And I'm like, because that's not your, that's, that's their that's money. Like pre -money that's pre-money the that they had saving. to get So somewhere. he would have to recoup. They couldn't get that. Then some of the same people complaining about this that couldn't wrap around, posted about they were very upset that Giovanni's was charging a credit card fee. If you use your credit card, it was like two and a half percent or something. And people came back right away with like, well, who do you think pays the credit card fee? And they said, well, I shouldn't have to pay a fee to use my credit card. If you can't afford for me to shop at your place, then blah, blah, blah. And I thought, fine, they should just raise their prices across the board right. for everybody. That's, yep. the, that's what people don't get. Like, they're just passing on the cost. And then how many people thought, well, I use my debit card and they don't charge for that. And I'm like, of course they, they charge for that. Every time you swipe your card in any establishment, that establishment is paying probably two to three percent plus a you know five to fifteen cent transaction fee. It, you spend a dollar, they're they're not getting a dollar. But people couldn't. I was a kind of surprised at how many people no, couldn't after, wrap their after the past three years nothing about the stupidity of mankind surprises me anymore i <laughs> used to be like oh no everyone can get it so, but now i'm like no two plus two is five and the so government's good then going to this article and i don't i'm not saying Slash this is, sarcasm in case yeah, that video right, comes out someday <laughs> um the article that caught my eye in the Union Leader, and this isn't about people not getting it. This is just part of why people don't understand what is real, because I think we mislead people, whether it's intentional or not. Oh, a lot of it is intentional. The headline Priming, reads, word choices, manipulation. So it's all. the headline on this article says six beds, 28 homeless youth. Who gets a good night's sleep? And I'm like, geez, that sucks. And I shared it with two political friends the whole article, and they said, oh, those poor kids. And I said, but wait. So they talk about, this is about Waypoint, and Waypoint has a facility that um, when they opened it, it was a 2.48 million youth resource center, which opened on October 31st. Okay. Okay. Um, which is a lot of money, $2.48 million. That's why your eggs cost $5, exactly. folks. So then, um, I mean, it's nonprofit and they do raise their money supposedly from um, fundraising. So I, I'm not knocking that. I'm not knocking that they probably do some good things for some good people. Oh, I just bet you that there's grant money from the there federal government involved there. But what there, caught me is... the most, and I was like, what? So they're talking about this facility that has 14 beds. They did used to have, um, at one point, the shelter was reconfigured with private guaranteed rooms as an incentive for people to work on their problems. That makes sense, right? But when COVID pit hit, the space became their priority. And I'm thinking, okay, but when are you going to stop running that model for COVID because you need to move on with the, go back to your original model. But anyways, 
Um, 14 beds. Eight of them are for two week stints. So to get somebody in there, you, and if you want to continue past the two weeks, you got to make your case as to why. Fair, again, don't have a problem with that. Six of them are overnight beds. Okay. Um, and the, the 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 director of youth services, who ironically, not ironically, who is the Ward 12 alderman, um, Aaron George Kelly, talks about how they have a lottery. So everybody puts their name in and they pull out and they have a, oh, an app wow. and it picks six names and those are the six and they wish the rest better and come back tomorrow type thing. And that is unfortunate. Like that bothered me. But what irked me about this article is we're talking about homeless youth and she's the director of youth services and all this stuff. They serve people 18 to 25 years old. Hmm. No offense to anybody 18 to 25 year old who believes that they're still a child, but you are actually adults. You can join the military, you can enter into a contract, you can get married, you can do all sorts of things. You can't get a beer because somebody thinks that you have to be a bigger <laughs> adult to do that. Um, but Because you can kill people you are in your country, but you can't have a beer. If you're 18 to 25 years old, you are not youth. part of the youth. Yeah. And that really bothered me because I thought this whole article is playing on people's emotions about the youth. Because even my two political friends that I shared it with were like those poor, poor kids. And I go, stop. They're not kids. Maybe, it, but we're led to believe that they're helping kids. Now, Webster House up on Webster Street, they help indigent kids. They help children, youth. Um, but then the second part of this, because then I started looking, because I was like, well, what's all this about? Um, Aaron George Kelly says it takes about $500,000 a year to operate the facility, money raised by donations. So I was like, good on the donations. But I was like, what's $500,000 a year come down? What is that? Then? So you take $500,000 a year, divide it by 365 days, because that's how many days people have to live, and divide it by 14 beds, and it comes out to $97.85 a night per bed. And I thought, that's a lot of money. You could get a pretty nice motel well, room, I'm not sure, in Manchester, I am sure for that, that they're price. doing other things other than just housing people. You know, I'm right. assuming there's other services for these youth. But um, I did, it says there are showers, a food pantry, a clothes closet, TV, Wi-Fi, a comfortable couch, computers, and support services for any 18 to 25-year-old. Um, I just think that people need to start hearing what the numbers really are. Because when you say $500,000 a year, it doesn't sound, it sounds like a lot of money, but what does that mean? Well, it means $97.85 for each one of those 14 beds. And if that's the case, is there room for 10 more beds in that facility? Because you did something with COVID. And then it makes me think, Dan and I talk about this a lot. There are so many empty retail spaces like the Shaw's on South Willow Street. Can we, can some entity lease that space, put up the exact same type of half walls that they have at Waypoint. They're just half walls with a bed and a little nightstand so that all of the people living over on Manchester Street outside of um, the, the, shelter. the shelter and the people living on um, outside of the old police station and the people now living behind the Wendy's on 2nd Street and the people who were living under the 293 bridge, which caused a huge Explosion. fire and caused the highway to have to be da shut down because the smoke was so bad. And thank God the bridge wasn't damaged because imagine not having 293 bridge available. We'd have to, uh, what a nightmare because people are living there. Maybe we could take like the Shaw's on South Willow Street or some other empty retail space that has bathrooms, because all retail stores have at least a few bathrooms in them. So there'd be some place for them to wash your face. You know, I'm sure. I mean, I bet you. I bet it would cost less than $97.85 a night. Oh, I think it would cost less. But basically, because government is now too big and, you know, we got to stick our nose in everything, yep. I'm sure there's one department this that'll be all, like, this is, this is illegal for, you know, because well, we I know. we can't do that because they don't have privacy and they, you or, know, blah, or blah, blah, blah. fire codes, you know, I mean, there was that and story. Right. Out of Peterborough a couple of years ago where a gentleman wanted to help the homeless and he built out several tiny homes and then the fire department came and shut down the tiny homes and put all those people on the street because the tiny homes didn't have the right yeah. um yeah uh, fire stuff and uh, and i actually posted on that one and said well where do you guys think the homeless people are right. coming from and i got attacked like a lunatic 
by lunatics. Uh, you know, it is very frustrating because I don't. I'm not saying. I, I think. I mean, or Valley, the old jail on well, Valley they, Street. Why aren't we turning that? Not, that, not no, the you're Valley the on, station uh, because the somebody station. bought that building, and yeah. what, they're supposedly be, going to tear it down and build something. But when? And if you're not in the interim, can we just rent the space? Can somebody rent the space? I mean, I always say what there's. Obviously, because you can see in, right through into the building, the old woman's prison in Gobstown is empty because the, the woman's prison is no longer there. Apparently, it was it was the conditions were able to house humans, right? Maybe we should set up a bunk system up there and like at least get. Uh, so one of the things you mentioned, I think, a couple of weeks ago on the show was. Um, I, I feel like there was a number in one of the articles we saw that said there were like 138. I want to yeah, say that was something. something. It's under 150 homeless people that they're sort of monitoring yep. in the city of Manchester. So you know, um, th this is back of the envelope math, right? But I was like, okay, if it's 150 people, and uh, you could do within three weeks, you could uh, at a 40-hour week, yep. if you're interviewing each of them yep. for an hour, yep. within three weeks, you right. can talk to every single one of those yep. homeless people. And find out the, what the deal what is. What if, right, we said, we think here are three plausible solutions. Yep. The one is you have to go into a medically induced coma to deal with whatever your addictions are, and when you come out, we will give you X services. Choice number one, box number one. Box number two, here's here's uh, your bed at this facility. Yep. You have two months to figure to, to get figure to come up with a plan. Just come up with a plan. But, like, whatever these categories are, I just feel like we like to talk about the homeless. And we like to talk about these nebulous ideas. Unidentifiable groups of people. Right, that where, there's, there, where there's important things. One is, it's, it's this nebulous, like, what is that thing that um, creates an emotional response. Mm -hmm. No one wants homeless, homeless. youth. No. No one wants homeless people. No one wants people suffering, right? right. Like, no one is walking around going, gee, let's ah, get look, like, more people to live on the sidewalks and right. poop in the streets, yeah. right? Like, no one wants that, right? But we have this big problem that is sort of just out there. Instead of going, there is a homeless guy. There is that dude right. who sits right this down here. This one person. So you got to talk to them. Yep. You got to like sit them down and go, what's your story? Yep. What do you need? And if they're like, "We, I just want to live like this. It's like, you can't That's live like this That's not allowed here. You can maybe Sorry, else. go to Florida. We'll give you a bus ticket to right. wherever, but not here. We right. don't, this is not how our state operates we expect everyone to do their best right and i mean and identify the people that need um support because of their mental health issues identify them figure out what it is they need and the people who are just i mean i guess and i don't believe this is part of the hundred and some odd that we're talking about there's always going to be people who for whatever reasons become out of their homes Right. right, and that you is know, you know, also um, the government's fault because right. of the economics. We are but, all getting poorer you know, because the government is screwing us. But, you know, like, you could have imagine a relationship, whether it's a platonic relationship. You know, you're in an apartment, you're, you're married, you're living together, you're just roommates, whatever the case is. And for some reason, something happens, and now you don't have a house. I, I, that, I'm sure it happens, right? But those people go with, the, like, you get in this line. You don't get into the... I need drug help line. You get into the, I need crap. I need a some place to live for a few weeks so I can figure out what and my plan if, is. If we're fundraising to from private people, right? Which is the way I think the world should work is yes, charity is important, mm -hmm. but it should be direct charity yep. from you to me, from me to you so that we know and that there's yep. that relationship of, hey, I'm helping you. Yep. You need to be grateful to me, not the government is ostensibly helping. Yep. And then, like, there's no accountability. There's no chain of command. There's nothing happening. And so for that 500000 you know, if you went to private people and you had these our, our buckets or our choices for the people, then someone could say, hey, actually, I do have a job. I would yep. talk to some of the people yep. living in the in the tents and stuff. They'd often have an ad uh, uh, addiction issue. Yep. 
But some were working yep. construction. Victoria says the same thing. She makes know. it a point of going into the parks or into the places when she's cleaning up a, a right. you know near Cracker Barrel and talking to the people and saying, "So how did you get here? Right. What do you, what would what would change?" And so with the, some of that money, we could start where we're doing first and last month. Right. Help people deposit. In, right. So you're actually helping someone get off the street into a place with just that little bit because it is a big barrier to entry now yep. in order to get an apartment why because the cost of living keeps going up yep. why because of inflation why because people <laughs> keep asking for free stuff why because we've been conditioned to so, think the government can provide for yep. us when we're the government's supposed to be the people and right. if none of us can provide anymore like what's going on right so of course they print the money and then <laughs> We and have it goes round and, round and round and then round. your eggs are five bucks, That's right. right? So it is very expensive now to get into a building. Yep. So if we could maybe help with that part, right? So that's a tangible first step that makes, uh, that actually improves someone's life. But I don't want to write a check for first and last month if you're still shooting up heroin right. or you're whatever. So it. maybe you got to go here and you got to get into that right. medically induced coma for a while. I'm, just, some, I'm so I done know. with that. I'm just, no, because there is, I mean, or just get into a program. I mean, you, there's sober sure. homes, there's all sorts of things. People get off, people become unaddicted all the time. All the time. I Successfully. Mean, Not everybody succeeds the first time, so, but people, it happens. No, Anyways, but the thing is also with addiction is in the same way that we can talk about nebulous, homeless, or you could talk about individualism, you cannot change unless you decide you are going to change. So in the end, it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter how much of a bleeding heart you are. It doesn't matter what programs we put in place. If that person that you're looking in the yep. eye doesn't want to do the work, there's nothing we can do for them. And then at some stage, the bleeding heartness has to stop. So on that note, um, Carla and I will not Christmas be here next week up. because it's Christmas this week. Um, Let's all end on the bleeding hearts must stop. Um, we will not be taping next week. We do hope that each and every one of you has a wonderful Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever holiday your family celebrates, um, and that we go into the new year with um, positive energy and hope that maybe some of the 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 t ick in our lives clears up a little and somebody comes up with some ideas that make things better for our country in general. Right, and and in the end, how, how do we make things better? It starts with you. Yep. You need to do you, and if you're doing your life right, then that is the it's best. The best thing you can do. Then once you have your house in order, you start to help other people, but you gotta get your house in order first. So on that note, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah. And we'll see Happy you. Happy everything. We will see you, see you in on the, the other year. side. Take Bye. care.